Hello and welcome on the front, the place where we discuss all things World War II and I bring you to these sites today. My name is Matt and on today's episode we're going to be discussing what remains of Germany's development of its wonder weapons. So come with me and let's find out. I am in Pienermunde on the island of Usedom in northern Germany. This was the location of the Army Research Centre from 1936 to 1945. It was here at this facility that the world's most advanced technological weapon systems were produced. What were these weapons? The V1 and the V2 rocket. Development of the Pienermunde site began in 1936 and it took just one year for the site to be fully realised as a rocket testing facility with the use of forced labourers. Over the years, the work would become so expansive that it would need its own dedicated concentration camp in order to keep up with the development work going on at the site. The site itself became so large that it had its own airport, seaport, hundreds of accommodation blocks for the thousands of scientists working here, its own power plant and even has its own dedicated rail network. The rail network itself was so large that it became the third largest rail network in all of Germany behind Berlin and Hamburg. The only thing that remains on the site today is the power plant behind me. Uh, as it was kept by the Soviets uh, after they took the site on May 5th 1945 and it was used by them to power the East German power grid up until 1990. The site itself is massive. We're only seeing a small section of it today, which is where the Pienermunde uh, Technical Museum is currently housed. It's a great facility, costs about nine euros to get into, uh, but if you have time, there are other bunker sites that are around that you can also explore. But next, let's go have a look at the rocket systems themselves. The V-1 rocket system, codenamed Kirschkan, began its development as early as 1939. It's testing in 1941, but it would not be fully put into use until uh, June 13, 1944, one week after the successful Adelaide landings on the beaches of Normandy. Their target was London. The first V-1 fell on Groves Road, Mile End, in South London. Uh, the subsequent uh, attacks would result in 100 V-1 uh, rockets being fired at London every single day in an event that became known as the Second Blitz. Eventually, as the Allies grew further inland, they eventually overwhelmed all of the launch sites, with the last uh, attack occurring on London in October 1944. The V-1 itself was equipped with an 850 kilo warhead and was launched off of a RAL system that we see behind me here, off of a simple um, uh, compass heading. Uh, the front nose was equipped with a distance, uh, with a measuring, with a distance measuring device. And after the V1 had travelled its predetermined distance, the engines would shut off, and it would simply plummet to the sky. Because of this very simple guidance system, it made it quite easy for RAF ground crews and squadron bomber command to shoot these down. Uh, in fact, some RAF crews uh, or squadrons uh, would even save ammunition by using their wingtips to knock the V1s out of the sky, and it would plummet to the ground, crashing early. The last V-1 attack would occur on the 29th of March, 1945. The V-1 was only the beginning of the Nazi rocket system, uh, ultimately leading to the very feared V-2. Let's go check out that weapon system next. The V-2 rocket system is the granddaddy to all ballistic missile systems today and would lay the groundwork for putting the first man on the moon. Uh, the development began in 1941 and initially Hitler was not impressed with the rocket, describing it as nothing more than an artillery shell with a greater range and much greater cost. The V-2 was able to carry a one-ton warhead and had a very sophisticated onboard guidance system using gyroscopes to um, uh, traject it into the outer atmosphere, the first rocket to ever do this, and then plummet towards Earth at supersonic speeds. The, the speed of it was so fast that it became near impossible to defend against. In fact, even modern defensive uh, weapon systems would have a tough time shooting a V-2 down once it had begun its descent. In late 1943, when the tides of the war began to turn against the Germans, Hitler ultimately approved the production of the V-2, touting it as a wonder weapon to win the war for the German people. In total, 3,000 V-2s were produced and fired at targets over London, Antwerp and Liege. In total, 12,000 civilians would die at the hands of the V-2. 
construction of the V2 fell to the concentration camp prisoners themselves. The conditions were so horrible that some 20,000 inmates would perish during their production, resulting in the V2 becoming the only weapon system in history to have more casualties during its development than in actual use. Peter Munda remained the primary development site for the V-series rockets until 1943, until they became the target of British and US bombers under Operation Crossbow. Two Polish janitors were able to sneak out detailed maps of the area to the British Secret Service, who launched their first bombing mission in August of 1943. Nazi High Command became so concerned over the bombing that they decided to move the facility to Mittelwerk in central Germany in Kolstein to an underground construction facility. Peter Munda would remain in operation though, but only as a test site, utilizing its many uh, launch tracks and missile launch sites to test the V-series rockets. The responsibility for the development of the V rockets came under the command of a man called Werner von Braun, a young mechanical engineer who became fascinated with the writings of Hermann Oberth, a pioneer in rocket technology and the theories of space travel. After the war, Hermann would surrender to the Americans, and he, along with 1,600 German scientists, would be secretly smuggled to the US under Operation um, Paperclip in order to help the US win the space race against the Soviets. The Soviets, too, took their fair share of German scientists, but in a more forceful manner, taking some 6,000 German scientists and their families at gunpoint to rocket facilities in Russia. Hellmann and other German scientists were ultimately recruited by NASA, and uh, von Braun, sorry, um, became the chief architect behind the Saturn V heavy launch vehicle, which propelled the first Apollo space mission to the moon. These weapon systems were touted by Adolf Hitler as being the wonder weapons to win the war for Germany. In fact, the development of these weapons may have actually expediated Germany's surrender, as these very expensive and resource-rich uh, uh, weapons uh, starved the German Wehrmacht of vital resources that they could have use towards their own war effort. But let me know your thoughts in those comments down below of what you think about the V1 and the V2 rocket system. And if you like this video, remember to hit that like button. And if you want more content from me, remember to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the front.